to focalizes fragmentation is concerned. We all are aware that we are being advocated. We are aware that many new laws are passed. Many new laws are tested by the uh, lordships and many new laws are also uh, come into existence in spite of the fact that the existing laws are there. However, we don't share the object of that law. Such laws we must learn from the judges because they are the best uh, uh, interpreters of law. While making law, the lawmakers or the legislative council, they look to the need of the society and usually it happens that if, when the, especially so far as the criminal laws are concerned, it happens that when the crime takes place, then we think of something like having laws in respect of those, uh, those particular areas. Those particular laws are the hasty laws. Usually, the laws are passed because there is demand. However, such laws are tested on the point of the constitutionality. Constitutionality of laws as well as the validity of those laws or the various provisions of law. If you take for example, right from the law relating to women, the cruelty to women, section 498A, if you think about Sharad Sarada's case and if you think the latest the uh, judgment of the Supreme Court in Arnish Kumar case, so how we have travelled so far as the law is concerned, the laws are passed, then there is one, one part of thinking that whether it is misused or not. Usually the laws are not misused. It is we all, because of us, because of uh, uh, our understanding or because of our capacity to apply the laws, we don't have this particular spare of particular laws and that is why we think that this law is passed and it was not necessary. There is nothing like having unnecessary laws. It is the skill of the judge to apply particular laws. Madam Lordship, Sadhna Madam, we have seen you, we have been you through your judgments and I am very proud to say that when she will share her thoughts on this point, it will be clear that how she has applied her mind so far as the various laws are concerned. So, this aspect on one side, we are not interested very much in only academic discussions. We are also interested in the practical approach of it. So far as the criminal laws are concerned, we are aware that in criminal, uh, criminal procedure code, there are certain sections which are applicable to the investigation, the police machinery. Then we go to the prosecution and the defense, application of law. So this aspect of application of law is important because the collection of evidence, how it is collected and how it is applied is very important. When the new laws are passed, especially so far as the cyber crimes are concerned, you will see that there is a long way of judgments so far as the application of the cyber crimes or application of the information technology laws to the criminal aspect of it. So, if you see from this point of view, these conflicting laws, what we think and the, the last aspect of it that we have Arjun Kotkar's case where the court has stated how it can be made applicable to various aspects of the uh, uh, IT laws or the, uh, the collection of evidence in the form of the uh, information technology. So this is very important aspect but I would like to 
draw your all, all of your attention before one, one more thing if you see this Arjun Phatkar's judgment a thing is very much clear that the dispute started in this case as an election petition it was the election petition of uh, 2014 Maharashtra assembly election and there in the certain videos were challenged and in this way the, the, this particular aspect travelled up to Supreme Court and was decided after how many years. So if you see, decision is very nice. It has given us all the directions possible so far as this particular new aspect of the documentary evidence in the form of e-evidence. So it has given very much dis uh, discussion on that, how to take it, how to, how to deal with it, when it can be possible to believe it or when it, it can be believable evidence, when it cannot be believable evidence. So this particular aspect is very much deeply described in this particular judgment. But think from the point of view that the candidate who has challenged his election in 2014, if he gets the decision, after lapse of five years, when the second election comes, then what will be the justice done to him? That is one part, a very important aspect. And this particular type of aspect we must take into consideration. The legislature's Article 14 and Article 15 very much clear. We know that we have laws, Domestic Violence Act, in the Civil Law form, we have so also act uh, which gives punishment and we think that for the offense under section 376 there is a the punishment in IPC. Then why should we have again one more section in the form of POXO Act? So these are the things which can be appreciated from the point of view of the judge. So we, we have to look to it from the point of view of the judge. In many, many uh, making of the laws, many times the lawmakers say that this is not, you know, no uh, anticipatory bail or no bail can be given in this particular law. Still, under extraordinary jurisdiction of the higher courts, the bails are given. So, when this power of bail is given to the higher court but not lower courts, trial courts. So he has to tra travel from the lower court to the higher court. So this law is based on such article 14, 15 of the constitution. Very much important just judgment which I would like to put before you for giving thought to it. That is the latest judgment given by the Supreme Court in respect of medical termination of pregnancy. If you think from this point of view, before giving this judgment, there was one more judgment by Padra High Court, where it was stated that it was a case under POPSO Act. A 13 year uh, girl, she was having her pregnancy at uh, 26 or 28 weeks and in that case, the Keeping aside all the formalities, the court grant permission for abortion. So this is one aspect. I remember, so far as this judgment of Madras High Court is concerned, I remember the first ever judgment by Bombay High Court in respect of medical termination of pregnancy. It was, I think, on the ground of uh, disability to the child to be born and a long run was taken, has taken place that she was given, she was sent to the, uh, for medical examination and all these things. So I don't, I don't want to say that it is not necessary. I only want to say that when such serious things are there, which are time bound, then in that time bound frame, the decision must be there. So and in this way, the, uh, this large judgment of the, Supreme Court in respect of medical termination of pregnancy has given the right to the woman 
in all capacities, married, unmarried, in living in relationship or whatever it may be, given right of termination of pregnancy to all categories of women. This is very landmark judgment, landmark view taken by the Supreme Court in this judgment and I am very happy that the progressive countries also not, not able to take such type of decision which is taken by our courts and that is only because of our constitution. Our aim of the human lawyers is the giving legal literacy to all, all these aspects of the criminal law as well as civil law, all the agencies. Because if, if you remember that in one case when I was acting as a uh, prosecutor, I came across the piece of evidence where it was stated that all the photographs were taken by the constable and he was saying that for last 15 years I am using this mobile phone and that is why I am expert so far as 65B certificate is concerned. So such things we should not forget but we, we must be able to teach and this literacy is the main aspect so far as the, our foundation is concerned. Thank you very much. I will not take your much time because already we are late and you are eager to listen to the, uh, or the other persons who are giving speech on the very important aspect. Thank you very much.
Mumbai's Madam Shirani, without whom you would not have met at all. Yes. And yes. I gratitude yes. is great from your Madam Shirani. And uh, Mr. Pandura, I have been seeing how we are managing things in telling the banner there. Yes. From lighting the Kutu Velipi, from everywhere, I can see your administrative skills. Sir, I am very much pleased that at least amongst all the women, you have the courage to sit. <laughs> <laughs> because you are our brother. <laughs> and uh, the secretary of the Bar Association. I am really proud of these uh, women who occupy the highest chairs, not only the judges, but in the bar council also. I congratulate you, my child, because I am elderly, I am very old, I am a senior citizen, I can congratulate you. And uh, my dear friends, where is my Jayshree Akolkar? Oh, Missy, Jayshree and Sujata Kambe, uh, Vaishali, uh, then another Jayshree here. And all of you and various leaders from various states, including Tamil Nadu, our uh, Krishnaveli, uh, Andavali and Vija have come, and from Karnataka, Kerala, uh, Kartika, Jisa and others, Moli, our treasurer, uh, then from Andhra Telangana, uh, Anjali Kano. Uh, and Revati, our uh, great secretary of All India Federation of Women Lawyers, our former president, who is always energetic and who held the post for the longest term in the Guinness Book of Records, and John C. Then again, our Bhartitas from Orissa, Chitrapani, and from Karnataka. Our great uh, Sheila Ji and her uh, Sandhya teams, uh, they have all come here. Uh, and many of us have been here to meet you all and share our ideas. And it is a very tough topic, I know. I need to criticize the judges for their judgments. And when I met Salana Ji, I went and said, Will you permit me to speak as I like to speak about the judgments, madam? She said, Why not? Why not? That's the judge's mother. I really appreciate your spirit. And thank you very much, mother. But to start with, a hallmark of any civilized society lies in the maturity and the erudition of its criminal justice system. Criminal law, like every other law, has to meet the pace at which society is evolving. The deviant minds whom criminal law seeks to Applicant and to bring justice have also become sophisticated and nuanced in modus operandi. The 21st century criminal mind is far more multi dimensional than what perhaps age old law could envision and afford for. It is this fundamental reality which brings to the forefront the challenging responsibility for reforms in criminal laws and the attitude of the judges to bring justice to the need. And when I speak about that, I would like to quote one uh, statistics. 2021, the records given by the National Crime Records Bureau says over 4.28 lakh cases of crime against women were registered in 2021, reflecting a worrisome increase of 15.3%. So in an apt time, Nilima has chosen this topic for discussion. Over 3.7 lakhs cases of assault on women with intent to outrage the modesty in total crimes against women. In 2021, there were 31,677 cases of rape involving such victims. So this is the background under which we are going to speak about what we can do 
to the women and the criminal jurisprudence, which is mainly best with the judges. And recent past, we have read so many judgments this way or that way. When we go into all these judgments, I feel that we need a check for the uh, judge's discretion also, sometimes not. See, it should be in accordance with the law, I don't deny. But when interpretation comes, I feel that there is ups and downs. Yeah. High Court Judge of Nagpur Ben says something and the same High Court, Mumbai High Court says something else. You are well aware of the judgment of skin to skin. See, we are trying to speak about groping and we wanted to bring groping as a criminal offence and introduce a new provision of law in Indian Penal Code. In the recent uh, discussion of consultation process done by National Commission for Women, we have been suggesting that. In Tamil Nadu, we have suggested, when I was invited, I was saying that groping is an offence. You can't just rush it aside as something, uh, a lesser thing, lesser crime. And you have to bring it. Because we know very well after Nirbhaya's case, we have included various facts like voyeurism, stacking, gang rape and other things we have included in the Indian penal code. Then why can't grow? Then only suddenly the judgment of the Nagpur court came to my mind. And I know the Honorable Judge of uh, Nagpur, uh, Bombay High Court has said that touching on the clothes of an individual cannot be termed as molesting. Am I right? Is it a right judgment? No. So the criminal jurisprudence needs good judges with some perspective towards women's emancipation and for protection of women. That is lacking in that judgment. And in various other judgments also I have felt that there is something wrong in the selection process itself. I may be excused if I use a word, but I need to admit that in the selection process there must be some norms. But normally what happens if you are very near and dear to me and sometimes we feel that if she belongs to my caste community or something else, judges are selected. Instead, give priority to the persons who have knowledge about law and the perception, perception about what to be done to the needy of this country. That is really lacking. And when I go into the details of one more thing, in a country like ours, where male dominance has been rather a tradition, it is not at all unlikely that we come across judgments which are detrimental to the progress of the society and has made in respect of women's autonomy. Nevertheless, the income and courts have not failed to deliver justice. Though at times this did come at price, the underlying patriarchal tone, which was result of their ideologies and beliefs of the presiding bench, judges speak, speak through their rulings. Judges speak through their rulings, which must not only based on law and reason, but as important display no prejudice. That is what is needed. None of these informed the two bail orders by a Kerala Sessions judge. Yes, Krishna Kumar. They are, there are Kerala's also. I was really astonished and surprised when in Sivik Chandran's case, the judge has commented upon the dressing sense of a woman, the prosecutors. How can a judge do that? Can you assess myself? Because I am wearing a sari, I am a very good woman. I may be a lovely sometime. If you want to fight for the justice, I may raise my voice. So you can't just say that by my dress, by my appearance. Please don't that. That is there in this civic children's case. Two women. The judges comment on the on a woman. The 
the aspect is that uh, there was a complaint by two women about sexual harassment by a Dalit, a Dalit writer. A word for it. There, the judge says, it is highly unbelievable that she is a member of scheduled caste. The, how can the judge mention about the, the caste of the prostitutes? Please tell me. He says that the it is highly unbelievable that the accused will touch the body of a victim fully knowing that she is a member of scheduled caste. I remember 1997 judgment which every woman lawyer will be knowing. Justice Viswata's case. Wherein in the lawyer court. You know that? Yes. What was that? They said that Babari Devi should not have been sexually harassed or gang raped by caste, high caste Hindus. That's not the statement, which was overruled later by the Apex Court. But even then, from 1997 till 2022, this concept is in the minds of judges, which is against giving justice to the women folk of this country. That is what I want to do. This jaw-dropping statement is mitigated by the judges' musings on Chandran being an activist. Accordingly, Chandran is an activist. He never cared for caste or creed or religion or anything else. But in that case, a judge says so. His orders also critic a delay in filing complaints. But numerous SC verdicts, you know very well, have noted the trauma of women, the trauma of a woman or a woman to file a complaint before the consent authorities. And this delay cannot be taken into account. According to me, when I followed the Weinstein's case, you know, Me Too movement, I mean, Me Too movement when Weinstein's case appeared in various papers there, and many women filed their complaint. For your surprise, I am telling this, nobody questioned why it was late. Never the judges asked a question about the delayed filing of a complaint or even after 10 years, 15 years, 13 years. They said, whenever a crime is committed, it should be addressed accordingly. When the complaint comes to the knowledge of the judge, it is his duty to see that whether such things can happen or he can mitigate such things or what judgment can protect the women of that particular country in that particular crime. But here, always, many judges, they raise the issue of delay in filing the complaint. That cannot be made as a basic thing, a ground for sending back the complaints or dismissing a complaint. That has to be taken into account. This is fairly basic fact in sexual harassment cases. You know, even if a woman works in a company, Immediately she may not be in a position to give her complaint. He, she will be affected by the, uh, by the by certain parties, uh, touches or speeches or uh, something like that. She needs to take a decision because it involves her family also sometimes. She needs to get the permission. Do you think a working, working woman can go to a police station and file a complaint against the wishes of her husband or a family member? No, she needs to discuss. And psychologically also, she will be affected. She needs some more time. Then in a criminal case, it is more than that. The trauma is much, then it shall to be considered when the complaints are uh, filed in, after a delay. But another layer of apprehension for victims of harassment, that courts may be as prejudiced as some people and police are. It is normal in any police station. The treatment of woman complainant, if she belongs to a high society, high caste, or with some stature, then that will be treated immediately, but not for a poor Dali or a downtrodden or a poor poverty stricken person. Unlike constitutional court judges who can only be impeached, this is my suggestion. District judges and magistrate can be dismissed following an inquiry. If such judgments are passed, lower court judges must be reminded for that possibility. Unless it is put in words in 
black and white. They may not be considering all these facts. A recent judgment of D.Y. Chandrachur. Don't expect the one picture that I am coming back after layer sometime. But now I want to speak about the marital rape question. The Delhi High Court in RIT Foundation versus Union of India and in IQA versus Union of India, they have taken a stand. Two judges have taken two different views. One says, uh, sorry, Rajendra Shakhtar says that it is against the privacy rights of a woman. She has her own sexuality and she cannot be forced to have sex with her husband even if he is her husband. So it is against Article 21 which speaks about right to life. Right to life includes the right to life of a woman too. He may be my husband. That doesn't permit him to touch me if I don't like. Don't we have that feeling? Every woman sitting here, please think of that once. Every one of us have felt that once or twice or many a times in our marital life. 77 countries have passed their law making marital rape as a crime. Then why not in India? Of late we are speaking about women's rights, emancipation of women, and when it comes to taking a decision, the central government says that it is not a suitable time now and we have to think about it and in the next uh, hearing date he comes and says that we have sent papers, question papers, the questioner to all the states to ascertain the ideas and the support to this law. Only after that we will fight. When, they, when the central government wants to pass a law, immediately they can pass a law. It's very good. When triple talaq was banned, I was really happy. Why? The central government doesn't have the power of such power in the case of marital rape. That is my question. So the one judge says, in 70, 375 and the exception class 2, one more point in this, I just want to share it with you. The same IPC says, a husband who marries a minor, though child marriage restraint act is there, and it says it fixes a marriageable age. Now it has been increased. You know that. But even then, if he marries a minor, you know who is the guardian of that minor girl? The perpetrator of the crime is the husband and he becomes the guardian. What sort of a law we have and have it be met that particular section to be changed, nothing happened in that. And in that also, in that exception class, if the husband, I am a major, I agree, but my right is disturbed. On the other hand, the exception to the husband from the offense of married rape, marital rape, is unconstitutional. And the exception 2 of 375 and 376 B of IPC, the husband having intercourse with his wife without consent or violative of Article 14, and are therefore struck down, was the judgment given by Justice Chandrasthu. On the other hand, Justice C. Harik Shankar said that the exception to section, to section 375 does not violate the constitution and that the exception is based on the intelligible differential. I am re really struck when I write the phrase intellig intelligible differential. How can it be? She is your partner. How can you harass your partner? When somebody harass, a third party harasses me and commits rape, that becomes an offense. And why a high pedestal uh, again, uh, Chandrasthu's bench? There also, the honorable judge speaks about marital rape. And I need not go into the details of it anyway. Marital rape is not recognized as an offense under IPC. The exception to section 375 of IPC removes marital rape. Another 
bench of the Supreme Court is uh, taking care of that because the, the, both of them they have given two of the judges have given different uh, opinions about or judgments about the case. Now it is pending before the court. But even then, even then, in the medical termination of pregnancy case, Chandrasur said that MDP Act recognizes a husband's act of sexual assault a forced intercourse committed on his wife as rape. He said the exception to section 375 was only a legal fiction. However, the court stopped short there, saying understanding rape under MDP Act would not have the effect of striking down that particular provision of law in IPC. Yet another case, case is that with regard to the recent judgment, when I read the the head note of that judgment, I was really, really disturbed. Though I have a great record for the Honorable Judge Chandrachu, and I have read many judgments which are very progressive, which are supportive, and in various cases, justice was done by him in a new method, a new way, thinking is was new. But the case, a few days back, my learned friends from various bars, they have sent it. It says, the husband has the, after a marriage, even after a marriage, you have a woman has the right to sexuality. When it comes to marital rape, I can admit, but the judge speaks about something else saying that, can somebody say the judgment? Anyway, even during the pendency of marriage, I can't support that. If a woman is interested in another man, she can divorce him, get relief from the earlier marriage and go and stay with him. Even in a living relationship, one man and one woman. In a marriage, one man and one woman. And if you give such a right to women folk, that you have the right over your sexuality and you can move with anybody, that shatters the basics of a society unless your family is protected. The society cannot be protected. When such judgments are implemented, I fear, I am scared that the basics of the society will be demolished or dissipated. That is what I think. This is my personal opinion. Uh, you may support me or not. But when I spoke to all my friends, they have had the same opinion and they said no. so. And think of Bulakan's Kerala again, once again, the Kerala nuns case. Because I respect Kerala's very much and like Kerala, love Kerala's very much. Kartika will agree. But at the same time, in Mulakan's judgment, Francis Mulakan, the nuns case, nun rape case, which was very famous case, time and again the Supreme Court has stated the sole testimony of the victim in a rape case is enough. Having you heard of it? Everybody might have heard. So, sole testimony would do. No more evidence is needed. If it is available, we can utilize it. If, it, if there is no evidence available, we can take the sole testimony of the victim. But in this case, in this case, Franco Mulakal in the Kerala non rape case is legally vulnerable. The woman has to transcend the attitudinal, attitudinal barriers of the police, judges and prosecution and the defense lawyers. Most often, it is the version of the defense lawyers that is accepted more easily than the prosecution's statement. We have innumerable decisions of the Supreme Court which have laid down the principles that the sole testimony of the woman is valid if the witness is found to be credible. In this case, the nun, while she was testifying in the court, was emotional and almost crying. She could not speak about it. And the judge could not believe her sole testimony. In the bishop's case, there were around 10 lawyers around the accused. 
but only two are lawyers along the victim. The trial court's observation is very interesting. While writing the judgment, the honorable judge says that it is not able to find out the truth. What is that? It is not able to find out the truth. So, the case was dismissed and he was relieved of the Franco Mutakar who has done a lot of worse things, who has uh, <coughs> because uh, a lot of uh, abuse, not only abuses on the particular lady, abuses done to the judicial system itself. A person who has given, uh, who was a witness was killed when he was in his house at Punjab. And various other two persons who were involved in this case were also killed. And witnesses were tampered, threatened, everything happened. But he got acquitted in this case. Why? Every time I ask the question, why the system is functioning like that? Then one more point which I want to say. Trial in camera. In criminal matters, we have all been insisting that we should have in-camera proceedings. Even in family courts, we insist that because it is a personal matter between two individuals, husband and wife. Why should others know about it? Be it adultery, or eloping with somebody, or doing something wrong, or importance, whatever it may be in a family court matter, we insist on in-camera proceedings. Then, it is more so needed in criminal cases. In the case of uh, the actress Bhavana. Am I right? Bhavana? Yes, yes. Bhavana's case. In that case, the actor in that uh, state, the girl has been fighting the case for a number of years. He had been filing a number of petitions before the High Court, Kerala High Court, and again Supreme Court going back and we are back and forth, back and forth. And in that case, the trial judge is a woman. I'm so sorry to say this. We have been asking earlier, even today we insist on women occupying the positions of judges because they would take care of the cases pertaining to women and children, folks or cases or rape cases and what not. But in this case, the judge the trial judge is the woman whom the aggrieved woman finds to be hostile. So hostility, the entire atmosphere of the court is hostile. There were around 10 accused in this matter. 10 accused persons, each two lawyers, that means 20 men, in addition to 20 lawyers in the court, 10 accused and for the accused, number one accused will come. That actor's name is Dilip. For him, another eight lawyers. What a situation is. You just imagine. In this court, in camera proceedings. All men are standing. She is the only woman. And judge is the only woman. And after that time, the first hearing, she was accompanied by one lady advocate. What a pressure is imposed on her. How will she remain? It is not in camera proceeding. I don't think so. This was an in camera trial, but there was no comfortable atmosphere for the victim to be posed. But the entire purpose of the in camera trial is defeated when a woman has to take about her ordeal in the presence of 20 to 25 lawyers because they were 10 accused. Why can't these criminal jury students or the judges themselves order for in camera proceeding? I have seen in Pokso cases in Tamil Nadu, a curtain will be placed here. She did not look. Am I right, sir? It's right here. Followed here. Maharashtra. But it happened there in Kerala. That is why I am saying that. So we need to take into account that in camera proceedings should provide, should protect, provide protection to the Victim. See, we may not victimize once again the victim. Victimizing the victim is another 
problem in court. Then role of the judges in safeguarding the victim while granting bails. While granting bails, the court fails to look into the real situation wherein the victim is once again victimized. While granting bail orders, the judgment should mention the instructions to be followed in sexual violence. There are few conditions which I, I want to suggest. Bail conditions should not mandate, require or permit contact between the accused and the victim. In one Madhya Pradesh High Court judgment, the accused was permitted to meet the victim during the bail period. Where certain, second one is where circumstances exist for the court to believe that there might be a potential threat of harassment of the victim, the nature of protection shall be separately considered and appropriate order made in addition to the direction to the accused not to make any contact with the victim. In all cases, where bail is granted, the complainant should immediately be informed that the accused had been granted bail. Nobody, no victim is informed about the bail granted to them. At least she should protect herself. I salute Madam Maharashtrians, but in various courts this has happened. The, I know the state governments and the public prosecutors who represent the state, how they represent the matters, how they allow the bail orders, everything we know very well. Maybe the judges like Sadhana Madam and uh, others may be permitting the victim to speak on this case. But even in Tamil Nadu, I don't think, am I right? My friends are there, the victims are not asked to uh, depose or say their uh, opinion on that, only the public prosecutor and we have come across various public prosecutors and, and their place we know very well. And We have to file intervening petitions here. No? Then only we will be heard and something will happen. During bail conditions, an order should avoid reflecting stereotypic, typical, or patriarchal notions about women and their place in society and must strictly be in accordance with the requires, requir requirements of the Criminal Procedure Code. In other words, discussions about the dress, behavior, or the Antecedents of the victim should be avoided. The point which I want to discuss with you is that is there a possibility of compromising, putting a compromise between the victim and the accused? In one particular case, a girl was raped in Tamil Nadu wherein he was convicted. <coughs> when the matter came up for appeal, in the appeal, the judge suggested that since the girl has become pregnant, why can't uh, we suggest the accused or the convict as a dead to marry her? And such a suggestion was mooted out by the Honorable Judge himself, High Court Judge himself. And they were sent for mediation. And all the women, the women lawyers, we gave a representation before the Chief Justice of Madras High Court stating that rape is not a crime against an individual. Rape is a crime against the society. How can you ask the accused, a criminal, to marry and that too it comes from the horse's mouth? The judge, we opposed to that and that, is, that was raised by us and the case, uh, the mediation was closed immediately. In Mohan versus State, where the Madras High Court had referred the case of a minor to mediation and observed that the case was fit for attempting a compromise between the parties. Likewise, Sample versus Inspector of Police, where the Madras High Court referred to mediation a case of rape where the prosecutor was a minor and had become a mother of the child as a consequence of rape because the accused agreed to marry. And all these versions are to be Reform, that is what my suggestion would be. It is urged that no observation condition should be made which initiates or encourages compromise.
that disparages and downgrades Anna and otherwise heinous crime, thus indicating that such offences are remediable by way of compromise or marriage. The judges forgot the trauma of the victim had undergone and that she never consented for such forceful, fearful penetration. So that needs to be addressed. Avoid passing of comments. The next one is about passing of comments on the victim. The observations made by the judges in offences against women, including cases under court so were extraneous. In a rape case, the judge questioned the victim why the rape victim and accused were inside the room till morning. The complaint explanations offered by the complainant, complainant that after the rape, you know rape is not an ordinary sexual intercourse. You know the forceful act and the violence exhibited, uh, exerted on her and all those things. She will not be in a position in very many cases, uh, they could have become unconscious. You know, in a lot of cases, the girl or the victim would have been unconscious for a long period. And the, the, in this case, the explanation offered by the complainant that after the act of penetration and all those things, she was tired and fell asleep. That may be true also. That is what happens always. And here in this the judge passed a comment. It is unbecoming of an Indian woman. It is unbecoming of an Indian woman. That is not the way our women react. Our women react when they are ravished. See, all these comments are to be curbed. We need to put an end to this. In case of sexual harassment against her, Krishna Kumar, the same judge with whom we started, while granting bail to you, the judge comments that the complainant wears, the lady wears sexually provocative, provocative clothes and the crime is not because of Krishna Kumar and it is because of the day. And such comments will definitely break the long-standing notions about the women of this country. It is to be made clear that no observation condition should be made in any judgment or order which reflect the bias of the judge or affects the dignity of a woman or affects the conduct of the trial in a fair and unbiased manner. Which in blame? In one of the Me Too cases, you know what happened in Tanishri Dutta's case? We everybody know. And recently she had uh, written in her Facebook that if anything happens to me that is because of the perpetrator of uh, the crime who had done to me, who were stalking me, and it is all because of this me to complain. Complain. Victim blaming has become the order of the day in me to cases. In Vijay Babu's case, the actor producer means no words in admitting that he named the survivor deliberate. In Pollachi, we had a case. A few adult Maids, those youngsters join together, they pick up a woman after befriend, 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 sorry, befriending, befriending, I am sorry, befriending, after making them friends, uh, they took them in a car, take them somewhere, they lock them in a room. They do all kinds of uh, sexual offences that will be videographed, they, they would videograph everything. And once again, these videographs will be circulated among those people who commit a crime. That was the case then. In that case, nobody came to the forefront to lodge a complaint. After a lot of soliciting one particular woman came to the police station and gave a complaint stating that she was the victim of their harassment and what had happened and what not. After that, the superintendent of police of that particular district 
says so and so who is living in so and so address have come to the station and lodged a complaint. Can that be done? Can that be done? <coughs> Once again, the uh, the women's organization resisted such things and gave a complaint to the Home Secretary with regard to such an offence. What punishment was given to that particular person? You know, he was transferred <coughs> say, as a same cadre to next police station. That is what is happening. Likewise, this Vijay Babu, he admitted, I am fair enough to say that she is the person who has lodged a complaint against me in a Me Too case. Section 228A of the Indian Penal Code protects the anonymity of the victim or the survivor of rape and by breaking this law, one may be sentenced to up to two years of jail and is liable to be fined. The actor also tried discrediting the survivor by claiming she was depressed and that it was she who approached him. You know what happened to Priya Ramani, the journalist case, when the central minister was accused of committing Me Too crimes, sexual harassment. On various, more than 27 journalists, they have lodged a complaint against him stating that he sexually abused them. Then a case was filed that was reported in Caravan in the first article with regard to the Me Too movement. Wherein Priya Ramani, the journalist had wrote that, then Akbar filed a defamation case against her. And every time, every Me Too incident, in every Me Too incident, the victim was brought to the court by filing defamation cases. And crores and crores of rupees were asked as compensation, claimed as compensation. And one more point which I would like to say is that the honor killings. In honor killings matter, one uh, example is that in Kandagi Murugesan case, wherein the upper caste woman married a scheduled caste man against the wishes of her parents. They, uh, they eloped together and they stayed in various places when they came to, when the parents came to know about them. They took the boy, tied him on a tree and poured poison into his nose, mouth and ears. And she was also murdered. Both of them died. Then comes a case. The trial court convicts the person. The father, mother, relatives who were all doing such things. But when it came to the high court, I was really surprised and I was really perturbed when I heard that all of them were released, acquitted. Why? What is the norm which is followed by uh, followed by the judges in this type of cases? This is also a crime against the society. We speak about there is no caste, creed or religion. Then why would such judgments come here? And there is one bill which is pending for a long time. If the government thinks it can pass a bill within three days, you know what are the other bills which were passed within two days and three days? But the honor killings bill is pending for quite a long time to become an act. Then section 74C of IPC amendment bill contemplates public censure in section 375 and 377 must also be included accordingly. And finally, in Bilkis Banu's case, the case which disturbed me a lot, every woman would know what had happened after the Gujarat riots. I am not going to speak about the political things in this case. I am just disturbed because we have had various circulars issued by the co-ministry of the country and co-ministry of the states. We have very well stated, we have already stated that in a case of rape or a heinous crime or a crime against the society which threatens the sovereignty of the country, all these things are made as the ingredients 
impracticable. In those cases, remission cannot be granted. Will this follow? A lady who, were, who was tortured, sexually abused, gang raped, her children were killed, her relatives were killed, and she fought the legal battle for nearly 10 long years. <coughs> and all were convicted. That was very brutal killing. Then how come that was released? So, while passing any judgment, <coughs> the matter is pending before the Supreme Court and I hope and wish that Wilkins Bono will get justice in that case and nothing more to add because it is the matter is seized up by the court. Anyway, thank you very much my friends for giving me
he is not taking the tea, he is not coming for the lunch. Why from morning you are ready? Hmm? I don't have any people. Sarna Maharaj. She is very, she is asking the Lord. She is asking the question. She is asking the relevant question. And if you are not having the answer, then that is the answer. So I am ready to read it. So see, as you are, the way everybody is habitual to read the matter, the sections. Facts of the case, credit goes back. Her landmark then, Shakti uh, means gambling. She has delivered 105 pages of judgment. That was a very horrible case in all. That gambling disturbs everybody. But she has given a very accurate judgment where she reflects that the woman, every woman is the backbone of the nation. And she must deserve the respect and honor. In pandemic, Madam personally, in Bombay High Court, Bridget was sit on the last person. I physically, I am very happy to announce here, she has disposed <coughs> of 20,000 cases. Madam, you want to come because out of the 
and that too to the victim. First of all, using the word victim in a genuine rape case is not good because she is a survivor. If it is a genuine case, let me make it clear. And I gave you one example, but not a single month had passed when I did not get a case like this. In most of the cases, when the young children elope and they are brought back, the first thing that the parents think is to file a case under three services. Then they settle it outside the court. The victim's mother comes and tells me, Madam, Zao de Matera Bail, Dium He said, Why? Because outright either an out of court settlement which the mother of the victim had the audacity to do or she used to say that because she was in love and if my daughter was to get married she would have got stigmatized so the only defense left to me was to say that she was raped and she has not eloped she was forced to go Take a pragmatic approach. Think of it from both the sides. So the statistics which increases is because of such cases also. It's not the real rape cases like the one in Shakti Men, the Hathras case, the Unnao case. These are the rape cases. And then at such times what happens is the real rape cases, they are ignored. So, the judges sometimes tend to look more into it as to why this has happened. And it is true that a judge is recognized by the judgment. But that is the individual judge. When we are speaking of generality, you have to speak of judiciary and not of a particular judge. And why is all this happening? Today, see, the rights, the fundamental rights which we lawyers have give us the liberty. Then she asked me, can I speak against the judiciary? I said, why not? I didn't say, you may. I said, why not? You have every right to speak against the judiciary. But speak against the judiciary. The question is, against the judiciary. And why is this happening? What do you people do? Now tell me, there are ministers. How many times have you read in the papers? This did not come. I don't know. It, has, it must have happened in Kerala. I'm sorry if the judge has, I don't know him, neither I know what were the circumstances. But the judge has said that because she had wore provocative clothes. Every day you read this in the newspaper. The honorable ministers come to the stage and tell you that why the rape has been committed is because she was wearing such and such a dress and it was provocative. How many activists have really walked up to the government and said you have no right to speak against the government? Raise your hands and tell me, is this not the duty of the lady lawyers? You all are the uh, social reformers. Law gives you the courage to become a social reformer. How many of you will say that? But I had said this openly in the school and then I had asked a question. All right, a 20 year old girl has worn provocative clothes and therefore she got raped. What about the children who are raped? Yes. <coughs> I have had a case, it still sends shivers. That is the only death penalty which I have given. In the rest of them, I have given life imprisonment up to the end of the life, not like Wilkes Barre. So, in that case, a two and a half year old girl was raped. How could she provoke the passions of a man? Concentrate more on that. Think of it. You will have to give justice. And justice must appear to be done. And I think now the time has come that don't leave the only the judges and the judiciary to do justice. Why you can't take steps? I will ask all of you, the congregation of active women lawyers, why you all can't take the step? <laughs> Today we discussed about triple kala. As per Muslim custom, triple kala was the way it 
was being done. And when the case came up, if I am not mistaken, it is Shairavan. Yes, yes, Shairavan. In that case, the legislators, in their own wisdom, all right, triple tala is not fair, it is not in accordance with law, it is injustice to the woman because she is really taken sometimes by surprise. That he can, he has to simply come and pronounce it three times. But how many of you should really touch your heart, ask your conscience and tell you, how many of you really agree with the criminalization of the Let there be one person who can stand up and say, yes, it's a criminal act. The legislators would have taken the steps and say that, just like Hindus, let there be a procedure by which they can take divorce. Why criminal is it? So, a Muslim man who wants the divorce, he comes for bail. And the worst part is, it's a non bailable offense. So he comes to the court and he says, I don't like my wife. She is not behaving properly with me. She is abusing my parents. And then if I want divorce, do I become a criminal? Please tell me, what answer do the judges have? Do they really have an answer but to grant bail? Then can you say that uh, <coughs> this is a criminal act? Stand up and fight for it, irrespective of the religion. Here you may invoke Article 15, 3, 15, 4, 16, 4, invoke it and stand as lawyers. Those sisters, those Muslim sisters will stand by you. Because they are also not happy to see their poor husband in jail. Why? Because he is not agreeing with them. How many women are happy with that? And what is the benefit to the woman? Is it not seeking personal vendetta? It is. By all means it is seeking personal vendetta. Thirdly, we come to the case much spoken of is 498. The case of Sharad Sarda was from Pune. The trial was conducted in this very court. Yes. And after that, the legislators uh, and the best part is they included mental cruelty. Besides physical cruelty. Hats off to the legislators. But then what has happened? You had a fight with your husband. Why did the judgment of Adnesh Kumar come? Have you people thought of it? And here it is the role of the lawyers. And precisely invoking this, that what is the role of a lawyer? Today we are only talking of rights, victims. And women are really not victims. They may be survivors of circumstances. And God has given them the potential to do so. So, the moment you have a quarrel, Best thing is go to the police station. It's a non valuable offense. Then the Maharashtra government says that the police shall first try to settle their issues and only then register the crime. There's a government resolution to that in Maharashtra at least. The police try. Since it is the police, the husband has no alternative. He says, no, no, I will treat her there. And then they are let off without registering. We have had cases before us, whether the, whether the maternal uncle, the paternal uncle, the great grandmother. In one case, the great grandmother, grandmother in law, she was about 89 years old, who had lost her vision when she was 75. And she was made an accused. In another case, a brother in law who was studying in ninth standard was made an accused. Why? Because he is the member of the family. And who advises all this? The lawyers. 
That is precisely why today I am speaking on Nordas. Who tells them? When they include, they will ask them the list. The lawyers are more active than the police. <laughs> this is Apolpar. She was a government leader and the leading government leader. So, I don't know whether she recollects. I was conducting a case of dowry death. Where the family was from a village whose population was not more than 800. They did not have, the accused persons had no electricity in their house. And the case was made out that she was killed because her father refused to give color TV. What were they to do with the color TV? When they have no electricity connection in their house. Who tells them all this? Who tells them? The father approached the lawyer, the fire is high. So, some think of the lawyers. Now we will come to the case of domestic violence. Domestic violence is extended to persons in a living relationship also. So that means, today we have come to a state where living relationship is recognized by the society. Is it? If that is the case, now you have think of it, what you all can do in today's meeting. In that case, there is a provision that even after five years of divorce or maybe after a year of divorce, she is still entitled to file a case under domestic violence. Why? Can you say that after she walks out of the relationship, she can still think of it? Maybe because she could not tolerate it anymore, she has walked out of the relationship. Domestic violence gives you the rights to live in the matrimonial house. <laughs> yes. There are other rights which the women have in that. The right to stay in the matrimonial house. The right to get uh, maintenance. The right for the child. Is it necessary to allege only domestic violence? And after you have walked out of the marriage, when you were there in the marriage, all right, there may be another explanation to it from the lawyers that when she was in the relationship, she could not have fight. How far do you agree to all this? Soon after she walks out of it, she could always fight it. But then there is a gap. And then see how many laws are there. 498 on the same law. Domestic violence on the same law. In fact, you have 125. That is another thing. And now, another introduction is going to be marital rape. So, she will come after 6 months and she says, yes, one fine day this was this had happened and thereafter I gave birth to this child. Are we bringing the bedroom to the court? What is to be seen by the court? Of course, all that is subjudiced before the courts and one should not comment on it. But it's high time the lady lawyers at least think of it as to what is your role in criminal justice. Are you asking your clients to find such complaints? And that increases the statistics of all such criminal justice. And therefore I say, stand up in Vilkis Parma's case, stand up to it and then read my judgment in Shakti Mill's case. Where I have given a reason that the accused shall spend the whole of their life in jail only to see that they are reminded of what they have done. The survivor can live with it and suffer the trauma every moment. Then, just giving death penalty, he is emancipated. He has got no pain. He 
dies, that's all. But now, wherever we see, wherever there are rape cases, the first thing you see the delegation of women going there and asking for death penalty and making it a case of trial, media by, uh, trial by media. Why? The court would see the constitutionality. The court is looking at the individual case and by giving the judgment, what is to be seen is the repercussions of that judgment on the society. Is it? If that is the way, have a pragmatic approach as lawyers. Giving death penalty is very easy. You don't really don't give any pain to that accused. And therefore they wanted to bring that Shakti bill. I will not be surprised if uh, Shanta Madam is going to support the Shakti bill. <laughs> <laughs> what remains? Why have the judiciary? If the sub could be given a child, a defense lawyer, then why the accused don't deserve a trial? <coughs> They've been convicted. There's no doubt about it. But if you have to take the law in your hands, then why do you need even the police machinery or the judiciary? The moment you know he has done it, just yesterday I heard a case <coughs> where the man was tied to the tree and he was killed. Fair enough. There was a child saying, I can understand the rage of the society in such cases. It, it is above all. But then, constitutional morality should always receive social morality. And only then, and only then, the women will get justice. Now let us speak about the judgment of, uh, yeah, in the case of under uh, 377 IPC. Way back in 2009, the Delhi High Court, none other than uh, retired Justice A.P. Shah, had held that it is invalid constitution. What happened? We all know. The Supreme Court set it aside. But in the case of Nartesh Zohar, the Supreme Court held that it is just a variation of the thinking, sexuality of that person. And it is held it constitutionally valid. Read the judgment of Justice General too. There are so many cases and the best part is see the magnanimity of a lady judge like Justice Hindu Malhotra. <coughs> he said that history owes an apology to all those people who have suffered Humili uh, humiliation and degradation by the society before this judgment. That was the magnanimity of the lady judge. Take the case of Sabi Mala, <coughs> since we were all speaking of Kerala and Tamil Nadu. It is held. But now see the dissenting view of Justice Sindhu Malhotra being a woman. Her view was what is decided by the religion or the religious statutes are to be decided. Those issues are to be decided by the religious institutions, customs and not by the courts. Isn't it? It needed a lot of courage for a judge like Justice Hindu Manodra to dissent and give that opinion. That what is a custom which shall sometimes remain a custom <coughs> and not always tested in the eyes of law. So we have such women judges also. The same thing has happened in the case of Haji Ali in Bombay, where the women got the rights. That judgment was also delivered by a lady judge. None other than my esteemed colleague, Justice Revati Moite Dede, who comes yes. from this bar. But there was some logic to it. They had found out that years ago the women were allowed, but suddenly when they become fanatic, they decided that they will not give their rights. It's a place of worship. And let me tell you, this could be my personal experience. Most of the women 
to fight for rights in the temple. I have never visited the temple after the judgment. <laughs> How many of you fought for Shani Shikinapura and go there to get here? What? Who touches the statue? The one who fights for it, there could be other ways. So every time we are not going to assert only the rights. There are so many laws for women that God forbid the legislators are not forced to pass some act like 498B for the men. <laughs> I was given a book while I was uh, presiding over the criminal bench. A young man walked up to me, took the permission, and gave me a book. The title of the book was Just Married. And the first, yeah, he's from Karnataka. And the first page, the first question is, dear friends who are getting married, have you obtained anticipatory blanket bail? <laughs> Is this the way? Why, 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 why are we giving such even uh, pause for the men to say so? Do we really believe that women can never be at fault? How many of us can say that? I am saying us. I am not saying you. I am including myself. Some of the cases which, of course, I don't wish to discuss them, women could be more cruel on the criminal side than a man could be. And she could be cruel not only to a man, but she can show the cruelty to her own children, especially when she is a daughter. Why are we not thinking of all these things? Let us take a pragmatic approach. That should be your food for thought in today's meeting. And only then we would come to gender neutrality. And we were speaking about abortion law. Yes, there, Justice Chandrasekhar has said that if she was a consenting part, and then the relationship breaks up. She doesn't get married. Should she still carry this child? No. She has a right to do it. So there, there shall be no discrimination between a married woman or an unmarried woman. And that is how, that is the logic behind the right to give abortion. Because you see, when uh, earlier, when there was uh, that testing of the fetus, what happens? You know it's a girl and it's the first key to the woman who doesn't want the girl. The husband comes later. <laughs> Otherwise she would not have gone for that test at all. Why would she go for that test? It is a male dominated culture. Yes. Yes. No, not of fetus. Not of fetus. Not of fetus. I am speaking of gender. I am not speaking of carrying.
to follow this. And then you all may take uh, your class further. Let's see what you decide till the next federation. Meeting. So today I am glad I could meet all of you personally and share my thoughts with you. I thank one and all and best wishes once again. Gender equality, gender justice, 
But for this conference, Justice Deshmukh sir has come a long way through. <laughs> 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 and not only wife, their daughter is also present here. Rutuja. Rutuja, please stand up. She is also going to be a member of our federation as sir suggests. This is the equality.
they are facing that problem because they are not having cases. Isn't it? Cases means civil or criminal cases or even uh, cases pending in the family courts. So what is happening is that our society is male-dominating society. Therefore, I think it would be proper to give special training to the lady artists so that they will cope up with this situation. Then, uh, again problem that how can they get clients? Isn't it? So banks are there, some institutions like uh, insurance companies are there. Can we convince them or can we change the law? And only women lawyers shall appear in such cases. So this type of empowering uh, women advocates is possible according to And that would be the rational change. And that would be real justice in the real sense according to me. So we are saying that uh, women are with the sections of the society is not sufficient. We have to act. Kruti ke, Kruti ke paas ja kar hum khayate hai, sahat maan ke hai. Action is most important. So, according to me, ignorance of section 100 is important, which is contemplated by Indian Pillar Board. Equally, the dropping of the advocates, lady advocates or women advocates, is also a serious uh, problem. And for that purpose, uh, I am also ready to help in any manner which I am able to do. So that we can improve the quality of the media markets, their, their uh, skills, and then they will have good capacity. So at this time, you know that since last day I am busy and uh, I have also delivered one speech in, in uh, one more function that associations of the retardations. Therefore I could not prepare for today's uh, uh, All India Federation Human Rights program. I am sorry. Because of the uh, paucity of time, I could not prepare. But I am very happy that our sisters are doing well and at least they are on the right path to discover the problems and also solutions. We have also got very good chance of uh, hearing or listening very very, very important thoughts from our leadership. I have also enjoyed her good judgments, best judgments, and uh, whatever she has guided is equally important, but uh, we are having a to forget it. We must follow it, and we must think, think that, and particularly introspection is most important. And even we can see that Pune is famous for Pune Tita Kaimani. That means all things are available in the Pune. But for this conference, number of lady allocates is not, not, uh, not, uh, we can say that not that much which we expect. So that we must also think and interested that what way those can come. I have arranged four or five lectures. At that time, for first lectures, the hall was completely full. And now, fourth and fifth lecture, there were only 25 media members. So, this is the effect. So, what way we can convince them, what way we can convey them, and what way we can make them to participate with us in this concert, in such concerts. I am thankful to all of you for listening to me and giving me an opportunity and also participating in this function. 
as I, I have taken the whole place of it and thank you. Thank you so much. Telling you today by association to Sarmani Mi Abdakshar, I look at Parliament of the Forbes and I am in the middle of the day. It ends for the time I just have to die. महाराष्ट्र वुमेन्स फेडरेशन स्ट्रॉयर आणि गुन्हेगार असोसिएशनच्या संयुक्त उद्यमाने आजची ही कॉन्फरन्स आयोजित केली होती या कॉन्फरन्सचे अनेक वैशिष्ट्य खऱ्या अर्थ त्या सांगता येतील की आजच्या कॉन्फरन्सला जे चीफ गेस्ट म्हणून लाभलेले लाभले जे कालपर्यंत पिढीचे होते आणि कालच त्यांनी शपथविधी त्यांचा झाला आणि आज आपल्याला खऱ्या अर्थानं लॉर्डशिप संजयजी देशमुख साहेब हे आपल्याला लाभलेले आहेत विशेषतः त्यांच्या एनर्जीबद्दल आपण सगळं ज्ञान काल पाच वाजता शपथविधीचा कार्यक्रम झाला आहे आम्हाला यायला दीड वाजले साहेबांनी आम्हाला सांगितलं की व्यवस्थित घरी जा आणि आज ते या ठिकाणी आलेत आणि हा त्यांचा लाभपट दुसरा कार्यक्रम आणि दुसरा कार्यक्रमात त्यांनी त्या तिथील आपल्याला भाषण दिलंय आणि भाषणासाठी आज त्यांच्या देशमुख मॅडम आल्यात आणि देशमुख मॅडम समोर बोललं की ते अवघड असतं तेही अतिशय चांगले बोलले साहेबांचं कौतुक करावं तेवढं थोडंच आहे आणि आजच्या कार्यक्रमाचा विशेष आणखी एक सांगता साहेबांची एक इच्छा होती की वुमेन्स कॉन्फरन्स ठेवावी आणि साहेबांनी जे जे कार्यक्रम आम्हाला सांगितले आमच्या पद्धतीने आम्ही ते पूर्ण केले परंतु वुमेन्स कॉन्फरन्स हे करण्याचं राहून गेलं होतं आणि आज साहेबांची इच्छा खऱ्या अर्थानं पूर्ण झाली की आज वुमेन्स कॉन्फरन्स या ठिकाणी ठेवली गेली आणि आमच्या नीलम प्रत्येक मॅडम त्या फेडरेशनच्या अध्यक्ष आहे त्यांची इच्छा होती की साहेब जशी झाले की त्यांचा पहिला सन्मान महिलांच्या हस्ते व्हावा आणि त्यांची देखील इच्छा आज या कार्यक्रमाच्या रूपानं पूर्ण झालेली आहे तर त्याच्यामुळे खऱ्या अर्थाने असा एक दुहेरी योग या ठिकाणी कार्यक्रमात आलेला आहे आणि या कार्यक्रम करत असताना आपण पाहिलं असेल की ह्या न्यायालयात अनेक वेळा वकील वकिलांची जुगलबंदी आपण पाहतो कारण हा कोर्ट हॉल आहे हा काय सभागृह आहे आणि साहेबांनी तो हॉल आपल्या कॉन्फरन्स साठी उपलब्ध करून दिला कारण मला वाटतं आपल्या न्यायालयाच्या इतिहासात पहिल्यांदाच कोर्ट हॉल मध्ये कॉन्फरन्स व्हायची ही पहिलीच वेळ असेल आणि ती संधी साहेबांनी आपल्याला करून दिली आणि आपण पाहिलं की या वक्त्यांमध्ये के शांता कुमारी यांनी मॅडमनी अतिशय चांगल्या प्रकारे जस्टिसच्या विरुद्ध न्यायालयात बोललो आणि असं वाटलं जातं नाव जरी त्यांचं शांता कुमारी असत तर ते स्फोटक विचार विचार पाडले आणि असं वाटलं जातं की जजेसला व्हाईस नसतो बऱ्याच वेळा जजेसला व्हाईस नसतो तर त्यांच्या जजमेंट पण व्हाईस दाखवतात परंतु आज न्यायाधीश आणि जे वकील बांधव यांची जुगलबंदी जे आपल्या जस्टिस साधन मॅडम आहेत त्यांनी देखील त्या उत्तर अतिशय आपल्या पोस्टो आपल्याकडे आहे आपल्या महाराष्ट्रामध्ये कशी जोडी शरीर चांगली आहे त्याचा एक आपल्याला खऱ्या अर्थाने जुगलबंदी आहे आपल्याला या ठिकाणी पाहायला मिळाली आणि नवरात्राचा उत्सव आपल्या खऱ्या अर्थाने आपल्याला मजाघरी पौर्णिमापर्यंत चालतो आणि हा नवरात्राच्या उत्सवामध्ये हा कार्यक्रम आयोजित होणं आणि आपल्या सर्व महिला म्हणजे या ठिकाणी एवढ्या मोठ्या संख्येने साहेबांच्या अपेक्षेप्रमाणे नाही पण साहेब आगामी काळात एक मोठी कॉन्फरन्स आपण ठेवण्याचा प्रयत्न करू आणि आणखी मोठ्या संख्येने महिला येतील अशी ग्वाही या ठिकाणी देतो आणि आज या कार्यक्रमास ऑनरेबल जस्टिस संजय देशमुख साहेब आपल्या लोक झाले त्यांचं पुणेपाक असोसिएशन म्हणजे फेडरेशनच्या वतीने वुमेन्स फेडरेशनच्या वतीने मी आभार व्यक्त करतो त्याचबरोबर जस्टिस साधना जाधव मॅडम यांचं देखील मनाशी आभार व्यक्त करतो त्याचबरोबर ज्यांनी आपले विचार व्यक्त केले असे शांती कुमारी त्यांचे देखील आभार व्यक्त करतो त्याचबरोबर शिला मॅडम यांचं देखील या ठिकाणी आभार व्यक्त करतो आणि अतिशय चांगला खेळीमेळीच्या वातावरणात हा कार्यक्रम संपला असं पुणे बार असोसिएशन आणि वुमेन्स फेडरेशनच्या वतीने व्यक्त करतो विशेषतः या कार्यक्रमास फॅमिली बार असोसिएशनच्या चांदणे मॅडम आल्या त्यांचे देखील आभार व्यक्त करतो आणखी विशाखा समितीच्या अध्यक्ष वाडेकर मॅडम आणि सर्वच महिला भगिनींचे मी या ठिकाणी आपण श्रोती आज म्हणून वक्त्यांना बोलण्याचा एक चांगला योग येतो सर्वांचे आभार व्यक्त करतो आणि हा
कार्यक्रम संपला असं जाहीर करतो It's already past four o'clock, and I would uh, seek permission to cut out all the films and just propose a very short few things. Dignitaries on the desk and in the auditorium, and of course uh, my friends at the bar. We are in extremely thankful for our Abhin Fresh Justice Deshmukh, our retired Justice Sadhna Jadhav. And our past president Shankar Kumari for sharing their ideas and on uh, the critical review of matrimonial and criminal laws relating to women and children, with special reference to gender justice, discussing the laws and case laws relating to this subject, and sharing personal human experiences. Thank you all. Thank you very much. I must also thank all of you for all the patience that you have uh, displayed here today for sitting here for four hours. Very quietly, without fidgeting. Thank you very much. You've been a fabulous audience. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Adhyaksha Chaturvedi ne aaj sa karyakram sampana se kya hai? Bye, Jyotish Sohi. Hai, Kumar Sarin ke saath saath hai.